Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do a little investigation into two types of butter, uncultured versus cultured. Now, if you're American like me, we typically buy uncultured butter or you'll see it labeled sweet cream butter. Now, this is most popular in the US. It's what most Americans buy. But what's interesting is in Europe, a different butter, cultured butter, is actually much more popular. It's a little bit more expensive, but much more popular in Europe. So what is really the difference between these two? And should you splurge on some cultured butter? That's what I want to talk about today. Let's start with the most obvious question. What does cultured mean when we're talking about butter? And the culture we're talking about here is bacterial cultures are a big mixture of different species of bacteria. So to make cultured butter, what we do is we take this, you know, mixture of bacteria and we toss it in the cream that will be used to make butter. Oh, and a side note here, I already have a video on how butter is made. So be sure to check that out as well. And I know you might be thinking, well, aren't bacteria bad? Why would we ever add them purposely to our food? Well, I'll stop you there because most bacteria aren't bad. Most don't make us sick. And that's why we're using these bacteria. Really, they're good bacteria. And we are using them to produce cultured butter. So we're using them. They're not using us in this case. And really at this point, the science of how to culture butter is so well understood that almost everyone uses a mixture of these four different bacteria. I guess for the approximately two microbiologists that might be watching this, here are the specific types of bacteria used. I know to everyone else that looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but feel free to ignore it's just the specific species of bacteria used to culture butter. Now, what are the bacteria doing in the cream exactly? Well, they will generate a whole new flavor and aroma profile for the butter. And that's the whole point of cultured butter. It's flavor, flavor, flavor. And so what the bacteria do is they tend to eat these simple sugars in the cream like lactose or milk sugar, and they generate all these different flavor and aroma compounds. And if you've ever tried cultured butter, you'll notice it has a really tangy and nutty taste compared to uncultured butter, which has more of this very mild sweet taste. To fully appreciate this unique flavor profile of cultured butter, you don't want to use it just anywhere. Really save this butter for things like spreading on toast or on biscuits. It can be used in simple recipes where that flavor from the butter can still shine through something like pancakes, pound cake, or shortbread. But if you're making something like chocolate chip cookies or blueberry muffins where really the butter flavor is just going to be, you know, covered up by chocolate or something like that. Just use your uncultured butter. It's probably not worth using cultured butter, which does cost a bit more in these instances. Just a quick heads up before you rush out to buy cultured butter, you might have to look in a specialty grocery store. I first checked Walmart while I was just doing my weekly grocery shopping and they do have a huge butter section, but not one with cultured butter. It's all uncultured, which will be labeled sweet cream butter. Where I did have better luck was Trader Joe's. They had one brand of cultured butter. It's in this blue packaging. And I'm guessing some place like Whole Foods would also carry cultured butter. I hope you found this video helpful and you're about to do some butter taste testing for yourself. If you've made it this far in the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you next time. Bye.